This is huge information, and I, for one, am so excited about it. A fifth women's volleyball team at the collegiate level is choosing to forfeit their upcoming match scheduled against San Jose State University because one of the players on SJSU's team happens to be biologically male. Over the last couple of weeks, we've seen this story explode all over social media with lots of people weighing in on both sides where female volleyball players are expressing they will not play against a biological male who identifies as a female, citing concerns for their own physical safety on the court and equality for women in women's sports. We've seen this happen now with four different universities, and now a fifth school's team has stepped forward to say enough is enough at the University of Nevada. We demand that our right to safety and fair competition on the court be upheld. We refuse to participate in any match that advances injustice against female athletes. Um, first of all, this statement is absolutely freaking baller. So congratulations to you girls for having the balls that ironically the people you don't want to compete against are supposed to be having by being honest that what we have accepted as normal in women's sports for the last several years, that men are allowed to come onto the court, onto the track, onto the field and put female safety in danger in the name of inclusivity and equality. This is not normal. It's not okay, it's not acceptable, and it certainly isn't fair, especially in an arena where we have laws to protect against female-only spaces like Title IX, which, of course, the Biden administration just decided to rewrite entirely over the last several months, saying that women don't actually have rights to women's only spaces. But I've been saying for years, this is what it's going to take. It is going to take women courageously drawing a line in the sand and saying, then we just won't participate in order for the NCAA or any other organization justifying this type of behavior to do something positive about it. And now that you've seen the dominoes start to fall, many other schools are choosing to do exactly the same thing. I always say that it always takes one person to just be willing to be the first person to be courageous enough to say, enough. That's wrong. It's not okay. It's not acceptable and we won't tolerate it. And all of a sudden you'll find pretty quickly that everyone else shares those values too. They just might not have been courageous enough to be that first person. Of course, not so shockingly and wildly disappointingly, the University of Nevada Reno administration is now throwing all of these girls under the bus and have put out an official statement from the school uh, in an exclusive statement provided to OutKick that they had nothing to do with the decision from these girls to forfeit their match. OutKick says this, the school sent this statement from the University of Nevada, Reno, in the wake of these students choosing to forfeit their match. The University of Nevada volleyball team remains focused on its upcoming matches against UNLV and San Jose State, or San Diego State, and intends to play its remaining schedule including the match with San Jose State University on October 26th, overriding the decision of these courageous young women to say we don't feel comfortable playing against a man, which is wildly pathetic. The university, they said, will continue to abide by the NCAA, Mountain West Conference, and USA Volleyball rules and regulations, as well as the laws and constitution of the state of Nevada. In other words, sorry, girls, we know that you don't feel comfortable doing this. We certainly know that you feel like your safety is on the line based on the statement that you put out yourselves. But honestly, we just don't really give an F. We don't. We don't care that you're uncomfortable. We don't care that you were promised female only spaces in women's athletics. We don't care if you think your own safety is going to be jeopardized in the process. We're going to play the match anyway. And if you don't want to play, I guess you don't have to show up, but we're going to say that you kind of do. Amazingly, in the midst of all of this, there is a member of the San Jose State team directly who is teammates with this trans individual, Blair Fleming, who previously was known as Brayden, 
who is standing in solidarity with all of the schools choosing to forfeit these matches. And she herself has joined a lawsuit against the NCAA regarding the infiltration of women's sports by biological men. In the last several years, we've seen only a massive increase of this type of behavior being normalized and accepted by governing sports bodies in particular. Most recently, we saw huge outcry over this in the last couple of months in the field of women's boxing, or perhaps I should say in the arena at the Olympics with two individuals who were intersex or biologically male dominating the competition and taking home gold and silver respectively. We also saw a whole lot of this regarding the NCAA in the last several years in women's swimming with Will Thomas, an absolutely mediocre college swimmer for men, suddenly deciding to identify as Leah Thomas without any sort of biological change downstairs whatsoever, if you know what I'm saying, undressing in the locker room and dominating in the swimming pool against amazing, courageous competitors like Riley Gaines, who deserve to take home the gold. What is different about this scenario, though, and where I see a whole lot of hope is that there is a national movement starting to take place with the courage of just a few teams in the tiny Mountain West Conference that happened to be my home conference at Colorado State when I was going to college, saying enough. And one by one by one, you're watching all of these schools, maybe not the administration or the university or the high ranking individuals who make the policies and the decisions, but more importantly, the students start to say, we are done. This is what it takes in order to create a change in public opinion. So my message to anyone who happens to be a collegiate athlete, any woman who finds herself in the situation of competing against a biological male, I hate, I despise, it wrecks me that there might be a loss on your record because you choose to forfeit these matches. But if we want the NCAA to pay attention, if we want a reinforcement of the policy of women's only spaces, if we want to truly advance feminism and protect the equality and safety of the women around us in our peer group, it starts with saying, not me, not today. Huge shout out to the University of Nevada Reno volleyball team. I wish you girls all the best success in the world and I hope your courage continues to inspire the next team. And I cannot recommend if you guys haven't already made prayer a part of your daily routine, downloading the world's largest Christian prayer app, Hallo, H-A-L-L-O-W. They have more than 10,000 original prayers, meditations, history podcasts, lifestyle podcasts, mental health resources, everything you can possibly imagine that has totally transformed my prayer life and that of almost every single one of you as well. Hallo is offering you a three-month free trial to all of the incredible content on their platform. If you go right now to hallow.com slash Isabel, H-A-L-L-O-W dot com slash Isabel. And our friends over at Public Square, America's largest leading marketplace for small businesses that are all pro-family, pro-faith, and pro-freedom and pro-actual science, by the way, actually got their start out in the beautiful state of California. They are changing how we spend money in America one day at a time, realizing that where we spend our dollars is where culture is going to thrive. If you are looking for businesses to support that share your values, check them out at publicsquare.com. And if you are a business owner of any kind, make sure you add your small business to Public Square to connect with customers who share your values too. I'm so glad by the way, that there are companies that are trying to get to the actual truth of matters like this and in standing for women in general, just one of which happens to be my amazing friends over at Garnu. Garnu is the only period product company on the market that insists only women can menstruate. Thank you for that, by the way, Garnu, because we need a whole lot more of that. And their pads, their tampons, and their menstrual cup products are all 100% organic and completely non-toxic. I have noticed a huge change in my cycle since switching to Garnu products, and I cannot begin to recommend them enough to you, especially after we just found out that most leading tampon brands have arsenic and lead in them if you're buying them at Target or the grocery store. You can get a discount on your first order to Garnier if you click the link in the description of this video and please 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 embrace the same courage that they are in standing up for real womanhood in 2024 and beyond.